How much fun would it be? Uh, well, how interesting would it be? And for me, I don't know. I just I always thought it would be such an amazing sensation to be so close to some of the man masters in the world of art. And our next guest, Ian Tom, gets that uh, privilege every single day. Senior curator for the Vancouver Art Gallery. And they have a stunning uh, collection uh, from Matisse and other artists from the Cohen sisters in Vancouver. How are you? I'm very well, thank nice you. Nice to see you. Is, is that a really special moment in a, in a curator's career when you open a collection or, or, or when you're having that collection come into the gallery and you get to see it for the first time. Absolutely, because I mean the the, the, the work of art is never the, is never exactly the same as you as you might imagine from a reproduction. Right. And, and I mean when you see the real thing, the size is different, the colors are more vibrant. I mean, you, and you get a quality sense of the texture and so on. Yeah. So absolutely, it's it's, it's, it's and you're very exciting. In awe that it's a masterpiece. So what is it like for you? You work a few years ahead as a curator, picking these exhibits and deciding what to do. And let's take Matisse for example. But what is it like when you first open it and you <laughs> see it? Uh, everything that you know you've been getting, everybody's done all the research, you know all about it, but there it is. Well, in this case, it was delight. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was great pleasure because so you don't always know how it'll all come together. Yeah. Is it and relief it, sometimes too that it actually just arrived? <laughs> oh, sometimes it's relief. I mean, I mean, sometimes it, these things go through very circuitous journeys to get here. So how do they get here? Uh, I mean, we're talking about a giant collection. Uh, is it by air? Does someone drive it here? Sometimes by air, but in, the, in this case, it was often by truck and in multiple shipments by truck because they don't put all you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Right. Uh, in case anything should happen, uh, but no. So, so and they come with couriers and so on. So, it, it, so it all ends up being very, very carefully choreographed. Uh, tell us about this exhibit. It's three years in the making from uh, from the decision made that this was an exhibit that you wanted to put on uh, to its mounting here in Vancouver. Uh, the Cohen sisters and their relationship with Matisse, and this is uh, by far and away, uh, I guess, the best collection of Matisse, uh, privately owned collection of Matisse. It's the, it's the largest collection of Matisse ever assembled by, by private individuals. Um, and it was remarkable because they basically, you know, went went to Europe as relative innocence. They sort of, they camped out with, with Gertrude Stein and her brother in Paris. These are two sisters, right? Were two they sisters. twins or were they no, no, they were, they were actually from a huge family, 13 kids, uh, of which 10 of it survived of adults. The older was Clarabelle, she was the doctor. Uh, and uh, there she is, with her, there they are with her, Gertrude Stein in, 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 in Italy. And, uh, and then the younger was Etta. And uh, and she she was really the major collector. She collected most of her. And, she, there and she this is, is Etta. This is here. Etta with her with, with her writing crop. Yes. And Clarabelle was the doctor. And what year are we talking about? And how, how rare would it be for women to be traveling the it's world? Clarabelle. One being a medical doctor. It was it was extremely unusual. I mean, in fact, Clarabelle couldn't go to Johns Hopkins, which was the main the main medical college, you know, because they wouldn't let women in at the time she was studying. She she had to go to a women's college, which she eventually became the president of. I mean, so she was <laughs> she's a fairly she's a fairly determined individual. The rest of her life, she was always known as Dr. Clarabelle Cohn. <laughs> well, and how and did the Cohn sisters cross paths with Matisse? Because he was an un unknown at the time as well. Yes, well, because they knew, they knew the Stein family, because the Steins had come to Baltimore in the 1890s. to Both of them wanted to study medicine, Leo and, and, and Gertrude. And then they, when they moved to Paris, they became the sort of the guides. And they introduced, uh, they, they introduced Etta and Clarabelle to Picasso and Matisse. And then they began to collect. Uh, and this was uh, quite literally a, a lifelong journey uh, for the Cohn sisters and for uh, Matisse as well. Absolutely, it was. It was. It, 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 from nineteen o from nineteen o six when they be, they collected their first Matisse right until Ed, you know Edda's death in nineteen forty nine. They, they continue to collect. And let's look at some more images. We have a drawing of uh, Etta it's, by Matisse. Yes, by Matisse, which was a, a part of a group of drawings Matisse gave her in, in, the, in the early 30s, which she'd commissioned, because by this time, Clarabelle was, had died in 1929, and she wanted to do a big book about their collection, and she asked Matisse to do some drawings of Clarabelle, and Matisse surprised her by sending a few drawings of her as well. <laughs> Can you imagine Matisse drawing well, you? But this is <laughs> an interesting, and this is a perfect example of it, this is an interesting interplay between an artist 
and a collector yep. or a client because Matisse was very savvy, as were the Cohen sisters. Absolutely. Well, he, Matisse visited Etta in 1930, and he realized that, they, that, 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 that the two of them had got a wonderful group of Matisses. And then he began to sort of like move things towards them and encourage them to buy things. In this case of this work, for example, it's from 1940, long after Clairvaux had died. But it, but it has includes anemones, and anemones were, were Etta's favorite flower. So How could you not <laughs> buy it? How could you not buy it? And uh, we have another one. It's absolutely gorgeous, this one here. Yes, this, this is a wonderful lithograph by Matisse. I mean, one of the great, Matisse is also one of the great printmakers of the 20th century. And I mean, you can see how, how, how provocative it must have been to have an image like this as, as, a, as a single woman, you know, living in, in conservative Baltimore in yeah. the 1930s, to have something like this Naked on your wall. Naked ladies well, everywhere. Ian, and this is part of the fascination with this exhibit and, and the art world in general, is this is such a great example of the art world, from collectors to, to artists to the passions that drive each mm -hmm. of them. This is a great story all the way through. It's fascinating. It's, yeah, it's a wonderful story because, as I say, it's an extraordinary collection. I mean, they, when, they, when, when Etta died, over 3,000 objects went to the Baltimore Museum of Art. I mean, plus... And it wasn't just Matisse. It wasn't just Matisse. And... It wasn't just Matisse. It was, it was, there were 500 Matisses. I mean, over 100 Picassos. I mean, and, and, and works by, you know, Van Gogh, Gauguin. I mean, you know, Renoir, Cezanne. I mean, a whole range of people. The whole gang was there. And yeah. this is classic. Yeah, this is wonderful image of, of uh, Matisse's uh, studio and, and apartment in, in Nice. And you can see that wonderful sense of pattern that he manages to control and a huge sense of color, which, of course, appeals tremendously to, the, to, the, to yeah. Anna Cohn. Well, and that's the other fascinating side of it is, is you know, Matisse, obviously a master of, of this kind of scale and painting right. and, uh, and texture, but, but for the Cohn sisters to recognize that, to realize that this was something special yeah. uh, that set this artist apart. Well, yes, when, when virtually no one else in the United States was recognizing it at the time. Yeah. Okay, let's look at this one here, the famous... Uh, the, fam the wonderful large reclining nude. This is a work he worked on for over, uh, over six months, uh, and it started out completely differently. At one point, you see there's this thing, this strange element at the top here. Yeah. Originally, that starts out as a vase of flowers. Um, <laughs> it now becomes something something different. And he sent he sent at uh, 22 photographs as, as it evolved. And so clearly, uh, you know, revealing his, his, his working <laughs> process to her. And well, what of you know, she's she had to buy, buy it. it. She had to buy it's it. finished. Okay. Who shall buy it? Let's as look at a Picasso uh, that we see here. This is a wonderful Picasso called a Woman with Bangs, which is from his Blue Period. Was bought by Etta in about 1930, shortly after Clarabelle died. Obviously, reflects the great melancholy Picasso was feeling at that period in his career after his 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 great friend Casagemas had committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's a and, and here's another example of an artist working with with a client. There's here's Picasso. This and it, look what it says on the top. Bonjour, Mademoiselle Cohn. Notice how he has his hat in hand. <laughs> Starving was, uh, artist. Starving artist. This was sent to to, to Etta by uh, by uh, you know Gertrude Stein in, okay. in, in, in in a letter. You know, encouraging like an the Cohn sisters to continue buying work because they'd bought a couple of drawings the previous year. Absolutely brilliant. Amazing. Ian, all the way along. What a fascinating story of these two. And one last piece. This uh, is the Gauguin. Gauguin. Glorious Gauguin from 1892. Uh, this is Gauguin's first uh, uh, this Titian wife. This is actually a work that belonged to Degas. Um, Degas bought this in, in, in an auction in 1895 uh, when, when, when uh, Gauguin was trying to finance his final trip to Tahiti. And so clearly someone, someone important thought this was an important picture and, and Anna and obviously everyone. recognized it. Well, you know, everybody yeah, always says it. You always go out to the art galleries when you're in another city, but uh, oh. Vancouver has one of the best collections, collecting Matisse and modern masters. The Cone Sisters of Baltimore is currently on at the VAG straight through the summer up until September 30th. You can see all the masters up close with this fascinating uh, collection. Very nice. Go to vanartgallery.bc.ca for more information. Ian, thank you. Thank Congratulations you, Ian. to yourself and all your staff for you. uh, putting on another great exhibit. We're going to take a break. Long